Hey, my name is James Murray. I'm a professor in the Department of Animal Science at the University of California, Davis. Um, my background is in genetics, and I've been working with genetic engineering large animals with the intent of using them in agriculture for about 30 years. And one of the projects that we started was to begin trying to genetically engineer livestock to change the properties of milk so that it would be more useful for consumption by people and the goats are part of that project. Well, some of the goats in the pen behind me are genetically engineered. They actually carry and express a gene that's originally the human gene for lysozyme, which is a protein which occurs in very high levels in human milk, also in your saliva and tears, and it's antimicrobial. It's part of your defense mechanism to prevent uh, bacteria from causing infections. And that particular gene is expressed in very low levels and the milk of our friends behind me, the goats. And so our plan was if we could express some of these antimicrobial proteins at higher levels, then that milk could be useful for preventing diarrhea or helping to treat diarrhea, say in young children in the third world where chronic diarrhea is still a very major problem. Uh, my name is Lydia Garris and I'm in the Animal Biology PhD program at UC Davis. So the approach that we're taking is actually to test whether we can use milk from goats that produce human lysozyme and use that to treat or prevent infections or to treat cases of inflammatory bowel disease. So these goats have been engineered to produce this antimicrobial and it actually can kill bacteria and can help control infections in, in the intestines and that's why Breastfeeding is often recommended because it has that lysozyme in it and can help manage the infection. The health of the intestines and the health of the bacteria that live in our intestines may have systemic implications in a variety of diseases. So by seeing these differences in the bacterial populations in, in these models, that just adds to that body of research that shows that there is a huge impact of gut health on the the rest of your, your body, whether it's cardiovascular health or even the health of the, the brain. So one of the main obstacles we face and that I have always considered to be honestly one of the biggest problems is the fact that the public does not necessarily see a value or a need for these transgenic animal products because they don't necessarily have problems or diseases that would be treated by this. However, in the case of malnutrition and infectious diarrheal diseases in developing countries, there is a great need with a lot of children that are suffering and even adults that are suffering from these diseases, but those problems just don't affect developed countries the same way that they affect developing countries. There is a need for treatments for inflammatory bowel disease and if we can share that information with the general public and they can see the value of having this type of product whether they suffer from this disease or they know somebody, a close relative or a friend. So from that perspective, if we can improve public perception and we can push forward with the regulatory agencies to gain approval to use these products, that could potentially have a ripple effect and make these beneficial treatments accessible to people in other countries that are looking to the United States for guidance.